What's up, players? This is Octo, and today I'm going to bring you another episode of How to Make Buggy Plugins. This one's going to deal with lists and hash maps. I'm going to try to go over it quickly because it's already covered in basic Java tutorials, but it's so necessary for making a Minecraft plugin. It's something I have to go over before we move on to the advanced concepts. Alright, so here we go. Let's jump right into it. Bring up through our Eclipse here, and in the uh, main, yep, in main here, oops. We're going to go ahead and start right up at the top. I'm going to show you what a array list looks like. Okay, so this is an array list, and you can store one object or one variable type into the array list. All right, so say we wanted to store strings and you wanted them to be colors, we would do just like that an array list of string colors equals new array list of string. And I believe it's just like that. And we import a array list here from Java Utility. Perfect. And what this does is if we wanted to go down here and somewhere like down here, we could do colors.add. And we could add um, any string we wanted to it, say blue or red or the number one or fish. Okay. So we could do that and that would be fine. It would store it. We could store multiple colors. We could store blue and then red and then yellow and they would all be stored there. Uh, and basically this is just good for checking if a certain set contains a variable or an object or something like that or an instance of it. Right? So that's useful but it only can contain just one string uh, per entry. Right? What if we wanted to save um, that color to a location? Right, we wanted to tie each color to a specific location or vice versa. We need to store two objects. So we've actually got something for that called the hash map. I'm gonna use weak hash map, okay, but it's similar but slightly different. I suggest use the weak hash map for now until you understand the difference, unless you already do. So what the weak hash map will do is uh, it'll let us um, tie two variables together, two values. So what we're going to do is we cache map, and it's going to be two object types in here instead of one. So instead of string, we're going to do, say, you could do integer and string, string and string. We're going to do location and string. So we could tie a string color to a location or a specific block. Right? And we're going to call it selections because we're just going to select the blocks and give them colors. Equals we cache map location string. Just like that, you can see these all have a similar way of being um, structured here when you call them up. So we're going to go ahead and import weak hash map there. Save it. Um, ooh, is that not correct? Oh yeah, I forgot to put new weak hash map. There we go. All right. So now that it's um, on the weak hash map is all set up. We can go ahead and start putting in uh, key and value pairs. Okay, so the key is the location, it's the first one, and the second one, string, is the value. So whenever we call this key, when we uh, say when we look up selections and call the um, the key of each location we've stored, it will give us a string in return. That's how that works. Okay, so um. If you store a location, you also have to store a string to it as well. So instead of add, we're going to use put for we cache map. Because we'll be putting a string in the spot of the location. Uh, so we're going to go down here and create a new command where we can do just that. And this one is going to be called tag. It's going to be a tag command. So we can tag a specific location or a block with a color. Just like that. Right, or it's going to be uh, written just like this. It's going to be, I'll comment it out real quick. Slash tag, that's the usage, and we'll also put color after it. So if you want to do slash tag blue, slash tag yellow, slash tag red, just like that, that's um, the goal. So that's one argument the color, red, yellow, or blue. So we're going to have to look up if the args.link is equal to zero, meaning there are no args, we're going to have to give them an error message. Just like this player dot send message. Uh, there we go. Try adding a color after the tag command. 
because they didn't add anything. There was no arguments, just the word tag. All right, and we'll return true there, so they can start over. Otherwise, if there is an argument afterwards, uh, we will check that argument. It doesn't matter if there's uh, one argument or a billion, because we are only interested in that first argument. You could probably check for multiple cases. Uh, that's up to you. For here, this will work. So we're going to check the first arg, which is arg0, um, if you remember. Or if you used to Java, you know that 0 is the first one in the set. So we're going to look at it, uh, the lowercase version of it. All right. So if it's if that um, argument is blue, so if we do slash tag space blue, it'll give us, um, actually we'll look at all the cases here. So we'll, we want to do three colors, red, blue, or yellow. And then the default, of course, in case um, none of the colors are recognized, like that. There we go. And let me go over it real quick what we want them to do. Um, we're going to tag each block with a color, and then all at once, we're going to do a command that changes all those blocks to the color we tagged. All right? And it will remember what color we tagged them as. So if we change them in the middle of tagging it, say we change our minor one block, you go back and re-tag it, and it'll still work just fine. Okay? Because they've all been saved to that hash map. All right? So what we need to do is we need to um, put this color and the block um, together into that the hash map. So we're going to get it selections here. That's the hash map, remember? We're going to put, that's the command to put objects, um, object pairs. Alright, so we'll put just like that. And it's going to be two parameters here. The first one is going to be the location, the key, and the second one is going to be the string or the value. Alright, so um, we just want to get the player's location where they're standing on and We'll take away one from the uh, Y so that it's the one directly below them. So whatever block you're standing on is the one that'll get selected when you use the command, and it'll put in blue. That's the string. So we got our location for the block and the string here. And I'm going to going over it a little quickly, but it's stuff we've already covered. So if, um, if you're having difficulties with this, check over the last videos. All right, and we're gonna return to there beautiful thing is we can do this copy and paste for each of the colors and just change out the string for the one here red and yellow if you were clever you could probably find a more efficient way of doing this instead of copying and pasting you could just insert the, the uh, argument there but I'm being lazy and doing it this way this will work just fine alright so if the argument is not one of the three colors we selected we're gonna give them a message that says you know we don't recognize that color, but uh, recognize uh, in tag command. Yeah, that'll do it. Alright. Oh, yeah, and we need to return true. Whoa. Okay, return true. There we go. Now we've got our tag command. Alright, this should be able to tag anything and put it into our weak cache map. And by the way, um, if we restarted the server after tagging things, that weak cache map will get cleared. Alright, so the array list. So if you want to save the values, you got to put them in a config, and we'll go over that later uh, in more advanced tutorials, saving uh, hash maps to configs. But for now, it'll work until you reset your um, until you reset your server. Or if you're clever, you can save it to your config um, just by uh, doing like a get, like you get each one and individually save them in a for loop. All right. But for now, we're just going to try to do this here. We're going to colorify. I'm going to create a new command called colorify. So now we've got tag and colorify. And this will just be used by typing in, here we go, colorify. All right? Just like that. It's no arguments. When you type it in, it'll take all the blocks we tagged and their colors, and it'll turn them into those colored blocks. And I'm thinking wool will be fine, so we use wool colored blocks. All right? So um, when we type in chlor chlorophyll, we're going to do a for loop, all right? Because we want to do it. We don't know how many blocks or values we put into our weak hash map, so we're just going to loop through the entire thing. And you can loop through a weak hash map by doing it this way, all right? Um, if you know in Java, you can use the colon here to. Uh, this is basically it means each, all right? So for each. Alright, so for each location, call loc, 
right? In selections dot key set because remember we have we're storing um these locations as keys, so it's a set of keys, all right? So selections dot key set is an iterable. If you know Java, iterable means you can go through it with for loops like this, just like this. If you try to loop through selections by itself, you'll notice you get an error. Even though you did save location locs as keys in selections, you need to get the key set to loop through it in a weak hash map. Just a little thing to keep in mind. So if you've done it just like that, for every location we stored in the selections key set, we can operate on it. All right, so we're going to get the color first off, which is going to be the selections.get, and we're going to get the location because the location key will return the color value, the string that we put in. And we're also going to get the block uh, at that location, right? Because we want to change it. So we're going to do a switch here so we can see what color it is. All right, so color dot to lowercase. Not necessary to put it to lowercase, but you know, why not? Uh, just for safety's sake. All right, so let's get some space here. So if the case is blue, that is um, color to lowercase is blue. We're going to get the block and we're going to set type. All right. So we're going to set the type to a material dot wool. There you go. Nice and simple. And remember from our previous tutorial, you can't just set the wool. Um, it has the data value. So you have to do block on set data as well. Just like that. And um, you have to use the byte value type. And um, I'll go over the different um, values here, but blue is essentially, I'll do it now actually. Blue is essentially uh, byte 11, uh, and red will be byte 14, and yellow will be byte 4. I don't know if it's the same for all the colored items, but for wool, that's what it is. You can look it up on Minecraft uh, Wiki for Gamepedia or whatever if you don't know the data values. Alright, so there you go. We can copy this multiple times, so I'll just do case yellow as well. There we go. So we'll copy and paste. And again, if you're clever, you could probably get around copying and pasting it in a more uh, efficient manner, but for now this will work. There you go. And remember, since we're in a uh, switch here, in a for loop, um, we want to break out of the switch after we've already discovered the color that we wanted. So say if it's blue, we want to break out and not go to red. Alright, so you got to remember to put in your break statement here. There we go. Otherwise, it'll always go to yellow or it'll bleed all the way through to the end. So make sure you break. And finally, we're going to need to return true. All right, so after it's gone through all of these blocks and changed them up and done all of its stuff, we return true and we're done. All right, it'll also give us a message. How about that? It'll say, Your blocks have been colorified. Beautiful. All right. So that'll do it just fine. And that should be all of it. Alright, so we're going to go to our plugin YML and we're going to add uh, commands here. I've already got them saved. Just copy and paste in here. By now you should know how to do this, so I don't need to go over it. Tag and clarify. There you go. If you want to copy it, there you go. So we're going to go ahead and, ooh, we got a warning here. What is it? Oh yeah, we took out array list, so we've got to get rid of the import. Save it, and now we can export to the server. Uh, yep, yeah. yeah, perfect. All right, and we're gonna uh, open up our server here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we're in, and we have way too many of these golden swords because we gotta change that eventually. All right. Um, we're gonna start using our command. So, let's say we want to tag this first block. Um. We're going to bring out another type here, so 
let's say we grab this die right here because we want to know what what blocks we've tagged and since all these white blocks look the same we're going to want to make sure we select different ones all right so we're going what we're going to do is we're going to change all these uh, polished diorite rocks whatever color we choose uh, blue yellow or red all right so we stand on top of it because that's what we chose to block directly under it we tag it blue because we want that one to be blue um, we'll tag this one blue as well why not we'll tag this one to be red tag this one to be yellow gotta make sure you're directly on top of it uh, tag another blue uh, tag another yellow Tag a red here, and I whoa. Okay, so and I'm not sure, but if we did this one, but I'm gonna tag it blue, and then I'm gonna well, hold on. Anyway, tag it blue, and then I'm gonna tag it red again, just to show that it changes. All right. So now we do the glorify, and it should automatically change all this, or at least close to them, because I don't know if I was exactly on top of it. Yep, perfect. And as you can see, they changed. Uh, and there it is. That's how you can use um, array lists and new cache maps to improve your bucket plugins. Uh, I do suggest you get used to using them because they can be uh, just amazing. You can even stack other array lists and hash maps inside of we cache maps and compound them like that so you get multi dimensional uh, hash maps. Uh, in the array list, which can be really, really cool. Uh, so you can try it out, and like I said, you can save the values from them into the config files by looping through them, and like I showed you, and saving each individual one. So uh, you can save the value pairs even after uh, the server has been restarted or stopped. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to it. After this, we're gonna start getting into some more advanced plugins. So stick around and check the channel. Leave a like and subscribe. Have a good one.